left Kisumu at 8.10, landed at JKA 8.40. Kenya Airways Management appeared before the Senate Select Committee looking into the crisis facing the airline to shed more light on the financial status of the national carrier. Appearing before the Anyang Nyungu led committee was KQ CEO Mbuvi Ngunze, Finance Director Alice Mbugwa. Now Mbugwa told the committee that the airline had not made any losses as a result of hedging. Mbugwa says the hedging instead helps the airline offset potential losses. During the last financial year 2014-2015, now KQ saved about 3.2 billion shillings after making a loss of 1.6 billion shillings. Over the last five years through the airline hedging practice, they have received a cash flow of 2.7 billion shillings into the business. If you are going to address your shareholders, we started hedging on this year in this year. Up to now, our experience is that hedging has not led to a loss to the airlines. Because we are paying the counterparty, sorry, the fuel company less by 4.8 billion, but paying the financing company 1.6 billion, you actually have a saving of 3.2 billion for the year. Questions as to why KQ's four Boeing 777 are lying idle and yet they are paying interest after they rejected an offer from a South African company at a rate of $322 million were also raised. Is it true to say that KQ has got aircraft that are lying idle. They are paying for the interests and they are paying for the pay, you know, they are repaying the aircraft. But now given the reality on the ground, and I know this will be a subject of discussion later, there was too many white bodies, so the decision was taken by the board rather than do the sale and lease back to now do the sale. KQ CEO also told the committee that their joint venture with KLM in Europe is struggling. Gunza said that over the last three years, the route has been loss-making. These are profits and losses on the joint venture between East Africa and Europe is shared equally over the last three years on the long-haul trunk, which is the trunk between East Africa and Europe. The net result of the JV has been a loss with the market conditions. In the last year, KQ has been forced to close some of its routes. Some of the routes closed are Abu Dhabi, Delhi because of economics, and Bangui because of strife in Central Africa Republic. Gunze, however, says the airline is increasing density in operational routes as much as they are closing others. In the last uh, five years or so, or three years indeed, how many routes have we opened and closed? We suspended uh, Freetown and Monrovia, uh, because the government uh, restricted the access of, uh, of people traveling from those countries. And so we are continuously evaluating different routes. And even if we are closing routes, Chair, in some routes, we are also increasing density in others. <laughs> KQ senior management was also put to task over ticket pricing for international and domestic flights compared to other airlines whose rates are said to be better than KQ's. The highest possible fare you can get on Emirates business class is still lower than KQ because if you then go, have to upgrade it to first class and it takes you just a few couple of hundred dollars, it means there's something wrong in your pricing. Because Our price with BA at the entry level is comparable at $1,000, and there's a difference between peak season and off-peak season. KQ's management will next week appear before the Senate committee to shed more light over the human resource management in the company. Many aviation pundits have proposed a cut of KQ pilot salary, saying it is ridiculously high compared to other airlines in Africa.